Hello stars, welcome to Astrology Moon. This episode is about looking at the fate of Malaysia airline flight MH370. I will be using a natal chart to represent the 239 people who boarded that flight. To the families of flight MH370, I am sorry for your losses and I hope that this can give you some insight in understanding what happened on this day through an astrological approach. With that said, let's take a look at the Malaysian Airline Flight MH370, the astrological chart. On March 8, 2014, Malaysia Airline Flight MH370 departed from Kuala Lumpur at 12.41 am local time and it was expected to land in Beijing, China at 6.30 in the morning. This red-eye flight had 227 passengers on board along with 12 crew members. For a list of all the people on board this flight by name, nationality, and age, please take a look at the link in the description below. The MH370 flight was leaving Malaysian airspace at 119 over the South China Sea between Malaysia and Vietnam. So Malaysian air traffic control instructed the pilots to contact the next ATC in Vietnam and said goodnight. Mission 8370 maintaining level 350. Malaysian 370. Malaysian 370, contact Ho Chi Minh 120, decimal 9, uh, good night. Uh, good night, Malaysian uh, 370. In the cockpit, there was Captain Zahari Ahmad Shah and First Officer Farik Abdul Hamid. At 121, the position symbol of Flight 370 disappeared from KLACC radar, indicating the aircraft's transponder was no longer functioning. At that point, the military of Malaysia was still able to track the aircraft's position. It was supposed to continue heading in the northeastern direction, but immediately started heading in the southwestern direction. At 1.52 in the morning, flight MH370 was now at the southern tip of Penang Island. Then it headed in a northwest direction along the Strait of Malacca. At 2.22 in the morning, the last transmitted data located flight MH370 at 307 kilometers northwest of Penang Island. At 6.30 in the morning, Beijing local time, flight MH370 did not arrive, so at 7.24 in the morning, after many unsuccessful attempts in trying to contact the pilots, Malaysia Airlines announced as a press statement that Malaysia Airlines Flight MH370 was determined to be missing. At 8.19 in the morning, it was believed that the Boeing 777 had encountered fuel exhaustion, which meant the inability to continue flying. Now it is time to see the natal chart of Malaysia Airlines Flight MH370. The first indication to notice are those blue lines running across the chart. Those blue lines indicate opposition. One opposition is with the moon and the other is with Neptune. Then the ascendant towards the left side of the chart and the MC which is on the top part of the chart. You should see a red line. That is a square. And the same line goes down to the moon on the right side where the blue line ends. A square as well. That square continues down to Neptune where the blue line ends and that square continues to the ascendant. When you have four square aspects of 90 degrees and two oppositions of 180 degrees, you get a grand cross. Look at the grand cross. Do you see anything familiar about it? It lands in Sagittarius, Virgo, Gemini, and Pisces, which makes this a mutable grand cross. A grand cross must be in different signs represented by each of the four elements, but they need to be of the same modality. This modality is mutable, so what does this mean? So the beginning, also known as the ascendant, is nullifying energy with Neptune, which is to bring hopeful aspects and peace. Neptune is nullifying energy with the moon, which is to bring positive outlooks by shifting energy in deciding how to react 
adjust and understand. The moon is nullifying energy with the MC which is to assert control or expertise to a situation. For a person, this is debilitating because it affects breakdown in communication. Mutable grand crosses focus on speaking up and using assertion to control feelings and thoughts, but are oppressed by the square and opposition. For planes, this means that the pilot relinquishes or has trouble with power with performing tasks. These thoughts or actions were determined from the inception of the flight. For these actions, changes in positivity are hindered. It is difficult for any natal placements to live with this grand cross, but for an aircraft holding 239 lives, it is downright horrifying. This grand cross will not return until 2180, which would mean another horrible day for an individual or individuals. Now it is time to look at the chart for the ways of dying. If you have not seen my 8th house video about death, check it out at another time. However, let's go over the main rules. So we're looking at all the possible ways death can occur on a birth chart. We must look at the celestial bodies which lie in the first 6 houses. These 6 houses are also known as the first and second quadrants. The first two quadrants are known as the night chart. Here is where the sun disappears and the underworld opens up. Death resides here. Houses 2 and 3 represent the time range of 12 to 4 am, aka the time of evil. Spirits rise and rule the earth right before the sun rises. Traditionally, Mars ruled the third house and then went to the eighth house. However, Mars was replaced by Pluto after that. The 8th house still represents death, but it represents the reason for someone dying instead of how someone dies. After looking at the first 6 houses plus the 8th house, we must look at all the celestial bodies there. Of all those celestial bodies, do you see any T-square placements? A T-square is like a grand cross, but it only involves one opposition of 180 degrees and two square points of 90 degrees. The T-square consists of Pluto, opposition Jupiter, and Jupiter square Uranus, and Uranus square Pluto. Even if these celestial bodies are in the day chart, they still can connect to deaths based on their energy. For people, a T-square can give a difficult time to placement holders because of lacking energy. Let's look at all the possible ways of death in the chart. First, we look at the Lilith and Jupiter in the 8th house. This means that it is the reason why this person died as so. The first symbol is Lilith, and Lilith translates to unknown reasons, and the second one is Jupiter, and Jupiter translates as an accidental death. But it also translates as power. Not power as in war, but power of wisdom. Jupiter is about growth, wisdom, and luck. It is the biggest planet within our solar system, but it is not a planet of war like Mars. Instead, Jupiter protects Earth with its sheer size. I will explain this part later when theories come into play. However, we have accidental and unknown power as the reason why flight MH370 disappeared. Uranus and Pluto are connected to it. Uranus is about machines, like a soda machine falling onto people, which is a thing. 1 in 112 million is your odds of dying by a vending machine. Even military assaults fall under Uranus' power of machines. Pluto is about war and crime. Pluto commits crime secretly though. Furthermore, we have other celestial bodies to include. Venus, which is about substances like drugs. Mercury, which is about traveling and deaths about oxygen. Neptune, which is about the immune system the sun, which is about natural causes, and lastly, the moon, which is about mental health and focus causes, meaning self-harm. Having all these types of deaths, we have to make connections to the causes first, which are Lilith and Jupiter. In this case, Lilith does not bear a lot of weight, so we go to Jupiter, because Lilith is a known factor. And because Jupiter is T squared to Uranus and Pluto, this brings us to our first theory section.
Siri 1 has flight MH370 leaving Malaysian airspace. During this time, it is in a small pocket where it is in dark and these are the borders of Malaysia and Vietnam. During this time, it is theorized that two US AWACS were flying next to the Boeing 777, jamming any outside communication. The plane was instructed to be escorted to land with the two AWACS. The pilot refused and therefore the plane was shot down. Thinking about this theory, why would the US military be interested in this particular commercial Boeing 777? And that's when we find out about MH370's cargo list, which was noted to have 2.5 tons of electronics, including lithium batteries, walkie-talkies, and accessories. These particular items were not scanned at the airport, which led to suspicion that these items were highly sensitive US technology being sold to the Chinese. At 1.19 in the morning, flight MH370 was over the South China Sea, making its way to Beijing near Vietnam airspace and Cambodia airspace. Shortly after a signal on the KLACC radar of the plane's position disappeared, air traffic control started to questioning the connection of the plane's transponder functioning well or not. So my first question is, does this theory fit into a Pluto-Uranus-Jupiter T-square? The answer is yes. War machines for power seem logical. But the next question is, has any commercial airplanes been shot down by any group of military, extremists, or etc.? The answer is yes. Many in fact. However, almost all have been claimed. There was one incident though in 1980. It was Italia Flight 870, which was shot down by a missile. However, the Italian's top criminal court at that time could not determine who shot down the plane. Out of four countries suspectedly involved in military operations at that time, one was the USA. So let's go back to the South China Sea on March 8th, 2014. Were there any US military? The answer is yes, but at the time there were no other witnesses who had seen the US military shoot down a commercial Boeing 777. Also if the US military wanted this cargo, would they not have just called Malaysian authorities to ask the pilots to turn back to examine the unscanned items? How would they even know if these items were scanned or not? Or why would they think that this aircraft would carry their supplies to China? Let's say that the US military anticipated the answer of the Malaysian government to be no, we will not help you to turn this plane around. Would there not be any other military presence in the South China Sea at that time? To witness such a huge explosion with debris? If this theory is close to the truth, I would believe Jupiter in the sense that something did happen to the airplane, but it was an accident. However, military radar caught flight MH370 in the Malacca Strait at 2.22, which was an hour later from being shot down by the US military. And this is where the second theory comes into play. But before I talk about that second theory, I'm gonna need a little bit more time to introduce astrocartography. Astrocartography will help us pinpoint any major accidents with this case. So for the next theory, it will be in part 2. I want to say thank you so much for coming on by. Please like this video if you liked it, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned for part 2. Until next time stars, goodbye.